I grew up in Shirobindo International Center of Education in Pondicherry. It's a very interesting and unique system of education where there are no exams right from kindergarten age three till college, BA, BSc level. And imagine that, that's where I grew up, right? So the first exam I ever took in my life was IIT Kanpur at the master's level. What happened is that because we didn't have exams, we really didn't have a formal degree to show at the end of the day. But fortunately, IIT Kanpur had a filter, had a written exam and an interview following that for the master's level in physics. And I was fortunate enough to clear that and I got into IIT Kanpur. Primarily coming from a system of no exams ever to a system which is the absolute antithesis of that, where, you, where competition and examinations is what you have to survive and excel in. So it was a very interesting transition for me and I have to be honest, it was not an easy one for me. And I struggled, I struggled for the first semester. And after that, once I got a hang of how one takes exams, the tricks that sometimes one learns, and over time I realized that yes, this is a system that I can survive in. And I was honestly not the most brilliant student or anything, I was a very average student. Uh, but I learned so many things from IIT Kanpur uh, in terms of uh, competition, in terms of uh, relationships, uh, in terms of thinking differently. Uh, there, were there were peers and students who excelled in music and yet they were also excelling in, uh, in their own fields. Now that to me was a nice thing to see. My dream was actually to go to the US for further education. And so I applied for a PhD in physics also, but I also applied for a master's and PhD track in communication. The reason being that actually that's where my heart was, communication, education, uh, something which brought me closer to, to people, I guess. That's what I was looking for. And because the Aurobindo Ashram education actually provided me with a, with a kind of a general set of skills uh, not specialized, but a general set of skills that really actually helped me. The language background is very strong here in the system of education in Pondicherry. And so that allowed me to transition into communication first, got a master's in that. Uh, and then one thing led to another and, and I got interested in education, actually the use of technology for education. And um, I transitioned from uh, communication to education rather seamlessly. And uh, for my PhD, one thing very interesting happened. Actually, I got a coupon in the mail, $99 round trip ticket to Ecuador. For a student, that is a dream. And I really wanted to go and see Latin America. So I took that coupon, asked another friend to come along with me. We both went and that's when something magical happened. This was my first immersion into a rural area. And I stayed there for two years documented their knowledge of medicinal plants uh, with the community. So it was a very participative kind of project. Uh, and, and we were looking at how do you come up with models of knowledge conservation that are not extractive. And that's when I got interested in literacy because we realized that to, to actually conserve any system of knowledge, you have to depend on some form of literacy. After my Ecuador trip, for my field work, I came back to Cornell to write my dissertation. And you know, when you're writing your PhD dissertation, you love to watch movies to take your mind off of dissertation. And that's what I was doing. I was watching Spanish films with some of my friends. And the Spanish films happened to come with English subtitles at that time. And as we were watching, an idea occurred that why don't they put Spanish subtitles on Spanish films? And maybe that would make us learn Spanish faster. And then it was more like a casual thought. And I said, why don't they put Hindi lyrics on Hindi film songs? Perhaps India will become literate. A very casual thought. And that idea kept working at me. And some of my friends said, maybe there is something to it. And so I said, okay, let me finish my thesis. And after this, if I get an opportunity, I'll research this and see if it has any value. And when I got this opportunity to teach at IIM Ahmedabad, that's when uh, I started doing some research on this idea that if you just subtitled the lyrics of songs in the same language, so Hindi film songs in Hindi, so what you're hearing is exactly what you're reading word for word. And essentially that's at the heart of reading really, is reinforcing that. So 
So we started doing research on it initially, purely an academic research project. If you look at the literacy challenge in India, essentially you can see it as two major parts. One is that there are people who are completely illiterate, which means that they cannot even recognize a single alphabet. That's about 290 plus million. There is a large middle group, which actually nobody talks about, which is about 300 million people. These are called literate, but they actually cannot read. So they are literate in namesake, but they are functionally illiterate. And then there is an, another group of about 300 million people who are actually completely literate. So they are broadly these three groups exist. Most initiatives of the government and civil society actually address the completely illiterate and transition them to very early literacy. That's important that they transition only to very early literacy. How are people going to go from very early literacy to functional literacy to actually lifelong literacy? That is a big challenge. So what we did is that let's focus on the middle 300 million people because that's something, that's a group that actually through media exposure, you can really transition them over time from not being able to read, being called literate, but not being able to read to actually being able to read. There is a big problem in India in our primary school education system. A child enters class one and leaves class five and the question is, do they actually become comfortable readers? Now studies after studies have shown that actually only about 30% or so become comfortable readers. The rest are weak readers. So if the same child, when they were picking up the skills, at the same time going home and watching these songs with the subtitles, that skill, that reading skill would get reinforced through these five years, we can actually guarantee as long as they have access to TV and as long as they have exposure with same language subtitling that they will be reading not only through schooling but after schooling as well lifelong. So this becomes a very simple way to make sure that throughout your life right from class one and perhaps even before that till you become an adult and, and much later in life as well you continue to read through songs that you like, through bhajans that you like, through devotional songs, anything, folk songs. So it becomes a very, very powerful way to make sure that people keep on getting reading practice without their knowing. Actually, more and more people are spending time in front of screens. A mobile phone is a screen, a television is a screen, a computer is a screen. More and more, that's where their attention is shifting. We can complain about it and we can say, no, bacho, you shouldn't be doing this. Or we can say, this is an opportunity, let's leverage it. We belong to the other category where we want to leverage it. So what we said was, what we've done with Bollywood film songs and subtitling has achieved something and has reached the youth and the adults effectively. Honestly, to make children literate, that may not be the best content. So here's what we asked ourselves. What do children do in front of a screen? You ask any parent, they love to watch cartoons. World over, there is something there. So what we said was, can we make animated stories for children in which the narration would come along at the bottom as subtitles? We know from our research and experience that same language subtitling will encourage, not only encourage, it will make them read inescapably. They will read automatically. So we know that. So when we said animated stories with the same language subtitle, subtitles coming at the bottom, we can guarantee that this is a reading experience. Now we are not going to ever argue that this is better than reading a book. I mean, there is nothing can replace a parent or an adult uh, loved one reading a book to a child. But sometimes we need to, to get there because sometimes parents don't also have the ability to read to their children. They just cannot read. Uh, so the one way to get there is to actually create this reading experience for on screen for children. And over time, what we've found is that anytime somebody becomes comfortable to, uh, com any, anytime somebody becomes comfortable in reading, they then want to start reading something else, something of their interest. So you impart a skill and they will do what they want with that skill. And usually it's put to good purpose. I believe that this literacy problem that has really, really uh, troubled us for the last 60 years, at least, 
post independence is something that we can actually solve provided we change our mindset to look for innovations now we can make youth and adults read through bollywood film songs and they will read something else after that we can make children grow up reading animated stories and they will read something after that so there is no reason why we cannot make india completely 100% literate in a very short time maybe 5 years as if if i were the information and broadcasting minister i would make that decision if i could same language subtitling will contribute to making millions of people read in india that would be huge for india's literacy but i don't see us limiting ourselves only to that i think this is a solution for other countries around the world and actually same language subtitling could become india's contribution to global literacy